Good evening, everybody. Dave Chase here from Mates FC. Um, mate, this is the Mates FC podcast. We are joined tonight by Father Christmas. Who are you? Oh, ho, ho. it's me, Danny Warner. Sounded like one of your ex-wives with that voice. I like Jeremy um, Needle, didn't I? <laughs> um, then we've got Mr. Richard. Hello, I'm Richard. I'm uh, one of the managers at Mates FC and part of Sauber Football Fitness Club. And then an angry man with antlers. Rudolph. Oh, I don't know about that. I've not seen your red end. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm Andy, one of the coaches at Football Fitness and Mates FC and also the welfare officer at Mates FC. Good evening, everyone, and welcome back. It's very fair. Um, yeah. So, just a little recap, Mates FC, for anyone that doesn't know who or what we are, what we do, we are uh, a football team that's slightly different to other football teams. We do not want commitment on our Saturday teams or our Thursday night kickabouts. We want you to come to football. Um, if mental health issues have got your life down a bit or you feel a bit low or you just want to boost your positive mental health, get back out on that pitch after injury. And just have a bit of a kick around. You might hate the gym. Just come and do this. Look at me and Andy. We clearly hate the gym. Well, the gym hates us. Um, but yeah, we put all of our games up as events. And you just go on our Facebook page, click on the events tab, see what games are up, and put down if you're interested. On the week of that event, we get in contact with you, put a little chat group together, see if you still fancy it, and we supply the kit. You meet us, we go and have a kick about, we have a laugh. And that's everything I know about football. Right, we've been away for some time, not in jail, because we did this podcast last year through the lockdown. And then we came back on April the 3rd and we've managed to play a game every single Saturday. We've also started playing Sundays and then we have football fitness and mates of sea on Thursday nights, so our lives have been a bit full up with actually trying to get as much football in as we can after 2020, where it's, you know, a few weeks on, a few weeks off with lockdowns. Um, yeah, so boys, how have you found the last year of actually just getting out there and going for it? Yeah, it's been, uh, it's been good, hasn't it? Like, just getting back to as normal as normal can be at the minute. I mean, uh, at the minute, it's going a bit mad again, but um, but yeah, I think it's been good. We've played a lot of football. Um, we've got a lot of guys that have attended our sessions. Um, you know, from the football, the football fitness, right the way through to um, the uh, mates on a on a, a Saturday. We've managed to get enough players to manage a really good uh, Sunday team as well, a league team. Um, so yeah, I think it's been really successful, and it's, it's just gone sort of from strength to strength. And even with the introduction of the Sunday League team, obviously that took quite a few players out of Saturdays. But um, but we've managed to sort of get some newbies in on Saturdays as well. So it's starting to grow again and just getting that word out. And obviously the podcast will hopefully ha help that. And hopefully there's a few people watching today. So if you are, just put a little message up so we know that you're out there and we're not just talking to ourselves. But yeah, it's been really good, Dave, from, from I think from our sort of side of it. As you say, every Saturday we've managed to put a game out. We've done about 33 Saturday games. So we've had over, over 100. Sorry, Rich is watching football. Um, and I, we've, had over 100, <laughs> <laughs> we've had over 100 people, different people, come and have a kick around on a Saturday, which is just mad. Brilliant. Um, as Andy just touched on there, if you want to communicate with us, um, just put a message underneath this uh, broadcast broadcast that's how like victorian um it's because i've got a real microphone now uh, put a message under it we can see that on our screen and we can read things out depending on what they say and uh yeah have a chat with you get involved um dan you played you you've generally been our saturday captain for the beginning of this well for most of the year um but you've also had quite a lot of injuries this year, as I think that's been quite a theme for a lot of our players, isn't it? Yeah, I've only had one injury, but it just won't go away. So I'm having physio at the moment, but I've been advised not to do anything for a while. So 
Um, I can't remember the last time I played. I think it's summertime, but yeah, it was going personally. It was going really well. Started to play a bit better as well. Seeing loads of new faces over there. But um, yeah, as Andy said, and as you've said, it's considering the year we've had with uh, not so much lockdowns, but COVID's never going away, is it? But um, we've managed to get a game out every Saturday. The opposition have enjoyed it, I think, as well. It's only recently where the games have started to get called off. But um, and then the success of the Sunday team as well. It's it's going really really well, uh, and a, a lot more new people are involved. Uh, long may that continue. And having someone like you, someone like you, um, having in that Saturday team, what we want is some key players that have been around a long time and know what they're doing. Not that long. And, yeah. you know, pass that wisdom on, on to people that haven't got experience or maybe haven't played for some time. And just having some key people like yourself there really helps nurture the team on and pass the pass the, the wisdom on. Um, but yeah, as you touched on with the injuries there, we have had, I, I think the thing is, we've had that disjointed year in 2020 where we came back about June doing, you know, groups of six and we could do training, stuff like that. And we've just grasped every opportunity that's been thrown at us to get a game out there, to make sure we have a game out there. And we've played completely through the summer because we don't know when it's going to end, you know, with the COVID, with the COVID situation. And up until now, it has happened. We've had a lot of people get injuries. Um, I think, and Dave, with the, in, so with the injuries, Dave, I think a lot of it is down to the fact that um, a lot of players are coming back to playing after they haven't played for a long time or there'll be a lot of people there that haven't necessarily played football before. And... Unless they go football fitness um, club, they're not doing any training, maybe. So that's yeah. another factor as to why people get injured. And something we've tried to do, there's like avoidable injuries, if you like, uh, or not necessarily completely avoidable. But we, we've learned and players have learned a lot more about, you know, the importance of the warm up. Um, this year, coming back in April, one of the main things we wanted to ensure is that we meet a little earlier and make sure we get time for a warm up in. Because as you say, People have just maybe not. We've had people that haven't played for twelve years, and just turn up on a Saturday and come for a kick around, and you know, not hamstrings that have been blown up out there. It's it's uh, quite a thing. Andy, any uh, any comments yet? Uh, yeah, we've had uh, Joel Toms. Thanks for all your hard work this year. Thanks, Joel. It's um, been good to see you out there quite a few times this year. Absolutely. And Joel, someone that used to go to a football fitness club to start with, and me just sort of, hey, sorry. Um, <laughs> we'll, talk about, we'll talk about him in a minute. Um, yeah, and Joel uh, is someone that I mentioned to Rich when we was at the side of the pitch of uh, football fitness club and just said, does he play for a team? You know, it'd be great to have him come and, ra- come and play on a Saturday. And he's been a key part of that. Um, every two weeks when his uh, work allows. And it's just been brilliant to see him, you know, uh, progress over this year. So what we got up there? You've got to visit a Santa. Don't let him sit on yep. your knee. He's been sitting on my knee. Off, off camera. Off camera. That was a long walk. This is uh, Dan's, one of Dan's children, Simon. <laughs> Simon Green, we call him, his full name. Simon, time. we had you here already, but we're... Got the real side green now. What is that behind you? What is that? That's Gemma, isn't it? It looks like a parrot. It's a gremlin. Stripe. Like gremlin, parrot. not a gremlin. What's a it's gremlin? Like birthday, <laughs> oh, all right. It's like Amberlin. <clears throat> Richard, uh, as football guy there. It? Well, <laughs> it's um, it, it, Arsenal well, against Sunderland. Good. Oh. Arsenal was uh, winning 2 0. Sunderland got one back and looked like they're going to get an equal. It's, uh, it's close, isn't it, at the minute? It's, it's quite a mad game at the minute. Sunderland are winning, do you say? No, it's 2 no, 1. Arsenal. Arsenal are 2 0 up. Like, oh, no, we're smashing but it's all, all Sunderland, Sunderland at the Sunderland, minute. Yeah, Sunderland right. just come back into it, isn't it? At Arsenal. Not it. At Arsenal. At yeah. Arsenal, yeah. Yeah, so uh, as you've just. So this man that's just appeared next to Dan, do you want to introduce yourself, Simon Green? Good evening, Simon Green, uh, one of the uh, uh, 
Uh, what, managers at Mates FC and part of Football and, Club as well. Yeah, so, uh, so I, we can only have four people on this uh, broadcast. Why am I saying broadcast um, at a time? Because uh, I can't work out how to sync anything up. But um, yeah, so uh, he lives just around the corner from Dan and Rich, who don't live together, um, but would make a lovely couple. Um, <laughs> Can I just say, can I just say, watching the Arsenal game, um, he just got caught on the shin, but because he wears those pathetic little shin pads and his socks are pulled up, he's lying on the floor holding his shin. And you're like, if you wore, yeah, if you wore proper shinnies and pro pulled your socks up, son, you wouldn't be lying on the floor like that no, right no, now, no. would you? Exactly. Avoidable injuries. That's exactly it. Now, when you watch him playing, he looks like he's wearing lost property. He looks like he's got his school shoes on. He wears black boots, he? <laughs> and he looks like he's wearing his school shoes. And then he's got his little white socks on because he forgot his actual, you know, proper clothes. White but, shorts with a yellow map of Africa in the front. <laughs> um, but we, uh, <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. Um, took a while. Oh come on. But yeah, those sort of things. Like you know, we've had a few people get their shins smashed in. Uh, because they've just banged a shin pad in and not put them in properly. Um, things like that. Anyway, Cy, si, um, have you found the last year? Just generally. Uh, it's, it's been all right. I've really enjoyed it. I've, I've enjoyed the mate stuff on a Saturday. No, it's good. It is good to see to see different people, different individuals coming over and, and playing. And It's nice to see everyone it, from a social side of things as well. I think we, we play the football and then if we, if, if people want to, we go and we go and have a beer and all that sort of stuff. So it's nice to make make new friends as well as play football. And, and that's been good. It's been very, very One good. Of the we, uh, with watching, you know, most of these people are strangers that come and play football and watching the little groups develop of just their friendships. Um, yeah, it, it's, uh, no, it's been nice to watch that blossom as well. Uh, Dan, you can try to share your screen. No, you? no, no, we're just messing about. I didn't know what, I thought screen because it's quite small on the, on the laptop. I was trying to hit screen to make it, I thought it was going to blow it up, but it didn't. I'm not no, trying to share anything. Do you see this about? We can come and split you up. No, we're cool. Santa's watching, don't you know? I've been good all year, mate. I tell you what, watching you inside trying to use a computer is brilliant. It's like watching uh, you know the two old ladies on Gogglebox. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, I'm intrigued. What are them uh, certificates behind your head? What are they? Are they? Oh, I um, couldn't possibly go through that. Are they sport? Are they sports? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I once got um. Uh, yeah, to the best of my knowledge, I've never touched a shop put, but I do look like a Russian shop putter woman, and um, the same thing. Though. I've got a. Uh, I found my like Mr. Webster's uh, what do you call it when you leave when you're at school school yeah. report record of it's achievement. It said David excels at shot putting. I ain't ever touched a shot put. I think he's taking the Mickey out of me. <laughs> but no, this, Maybe that was his highlight. Because uh, no, what this this is so this is Eight my big and spoon race. This Maybe is my you got another David's report. Pardon? You might have got a different David's report. Yeah. Probably David asking. Um, yeah, this is oh, my no, bedroom. No, no, no. However, because my desk is in the corner and I have to do court cases from here, so this is my serious side. If I have the camera this way, I've got a background of like serious. Yeah. Is it like, it's like the Sky Sports? It's your equivalent of the Sky Sports backing board. Ooh. Yeah, basically. Oh, Nan, I've got an allergy. <laughs> <laughs> I've got beef with Maureen Littman. <laughs> got beef? I've got beef with Maureen Littman. Come on in, read a couple out. What are they? No. No, actually, I'll tell you what, this is no different to when you like, add your little trophies that I've never won a trophy in my life. Go on, read, just read yeah, just one. one then. Read just one. one. Pick your favourite. Uh, this is my attention. Came third in the colouring competition. You've got, you got, you got some next to you as well? Yeah. I've got oh, another wall full here. Oh, yeah. <coughs> God. Wow. Show off. I made all of them. It's like a geek wall. <laughs> no. <laughs> what was that one? Keeper for a day. <laughs> Keeper for a day. David did a goal. <laughs> I, I haven't. <laughs> I was telling Ben the other day about when we was in a football team together. And he laughed. And I was like, no, I was actually in a football team. Guinness Book of Records for waving. <laughs> 
It's no one, no one to kick it, Steve. Is that the Cubs game? Oh, that was oh that come on, read a couple yeah. out. Come on. They're not funny. They're real. Just come on, on. Just pick one. No. Pick one. Shy. Pick your favourite one. Shy. Are any of them first, or are they all like third? Third. This is a favourite. Uh, Count the, the FA one. winner. Yes, a good one. Yeah. Is that the England one? He, Mate, pulled that. he must have pulled. Oh, yeah. So did that happen, that happen uh, during lockdown, didn't it? So there's something to talk about. So Tony, we got. Tony's printed that for him. <laughs> we, uh, we uh, Mates FC got nominated for our grassroots football awards for McDonald's and the FA, and that was around the time of the Euros, wasn't it? So back in the summer, and the double uh, cheeseburger. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> and I, I have really helped at McDonald's recently. Um, when you know four pound eighty nine for chicken nuggets, I'll be back shortly. I've just got a phone call. Uh, I'll pass you over. Da, 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 da. Talk amongst yourselves. Are we going live to someone on the phone? I've got a call you. It's not five star, is it? Oh my god! I love. It. I love oh, it. No, I wanted to. I know love that he's got. I love that he's got all those certificates on the wall. It's like didn't come last in the egg and spoon race. Well done. <laughs> Have we got many? Is there anyone watching? How many people? Is there anyone Joel watching? Thompson. Do we know? How do we know? Oh, I could have a look on Facebook. Three legged race on his own. I'm just currently looking at Danny's um, dinner that he's left next to the iPad. Got a new, new potato. Nice. There's a new, I've just had a, got a new potato there. Covered in sauce. Nice. It's a very nice jumper, though, eh? Rich, thanks. Very festive, I thought. I thought we were going festive, but then Rich come on and. Mug me off, and then you come on and mug me. Uh, I've been busy today. Was your curry? It was absolutely lovely. It's banging shebag, isn't it? It's oh shebag. yeah, I've, I'd say it's shebag was yeah banging. There are and there, there are other Indian restaurants you can use in Chelmsford. Worst, but... I mean, me go, me go oh. shops. always, it's always decent. We got four yeah. viewers. Four. Right. Well, we we're not said hello from all the viewers. Please write your messages on now, or if you've got any questions or you want us to cover anything. Obviously, this is the first one back, so we're uh, we're up for any questions that you've got, and we can. Um, we, we're just going to start on um, Dave's um, thirty-six uh, certificates. We're starting with the top right, um, which was uh, coming twenty-fifth in the egg and spoon race under sevens. Out of, came twenty-fifth out of twenty-four egg. people. <laughs> <laughs> you are the egg. Even um, the teacher beating. No, but back to that McDonald's <laughs> one. So we that was the Grassroots Football Awards, and we were awarded Community Project of the Year um, for Essex FA. Um, yeah, now that's absolutely amazing. And off the back of that, we've got to go to Wembley and watch the people that won the national version of that. Um, absolutely brilliant. Uh, we've done really well to get that. So that was about June. I think it was June, July, yeah, about July um, this year. So that's a massive thing. Bearing in mind, we'd only had, um, at that point, we'd only been back for about three months. That's a good achievement. Yeah, really good. Look more excited. You done it. You earned it. What are we think? Why, why have you got any wall then? You ain't on <laughs> Do we all want a copy. Yeah, can we have a yeah, copy? We all have a copy. Yeah, I'll draw you one. I'll draw you show a copy. Mum that. Pretty festive yeah. room there, Dave. It's that a big tree oh, no. back there as well, is it? Yeah, that's a tree at my bed. It's a real one yeah. going from the floor below. I um, I got, <laughs> I've got a certificate. I've, I've got a certificate, Dave. Okay. I came third in the Averley Koi show with one of my koi. Were you a koi? <laughs> well, I wasn't the koi. No. Was it the real McCoy? We've got some uh, new messages come <laughs> through. Hello, Andrew from Gemma Green. Hello, Gemma. Thank you for the Andrew. Money Andrew. She's only come on to check that I've actually come around. <laughs> yeah, she's just checking. <laughs> <laughs> Gemma's well, checking up the checking right, hasn't gone up the club. Um, <laughs> and then uh, Matt Smith, LOL, five star. <laughs> why are you so effing? I'm not going to repeat the last word because it's rude. Thank well, you, I think, Matt Smith. Worse. I think effing's worse than crap. Do you not remember that? When I, do you remember when I, I, think, I, think, I, think, 
I think he's done a typo there. I think that should read late and Orient. Why are you so? Um, right. And then uh, Pete. Hi, Pete. West Ham are massive. We know they are. You're not going to try and pronounce massive. the surname? To be fair, Arsenal are looking very strong against Sunderland. You went to uh, Southend the other day, yeah? Went to Southend the other day. The Mighty Blues two, took Simon there. Took Simon on a day out to watch the Mighty Blues win. Win. Yes, I say win. 2-1. I've and got also, to... you've uh, jumped on the West Ham bandwagon this year, haven't you, since uh, oh, this lockdown? Right. Let me just clear this up on air. I'm a South End fan, right? I love South End, but I also like watching West Ham. You need a bit of glory in your life. And I yeah, quite yeah. enjoy watching Arsenal, but I've yeah, been going West to West Ham team. with a couple of my friends and I've been really enjoying myself. And yeah. so, yes, I would say that I do love West Ham and I've just happened to pick a season when they're doing really well. I, You know, it's like if you go on a plane for the first time and you get turbulence, you think that's normal and you just sit there calm where everyone else is screaming. Yeah, I go to West Ham. I think they win every week because they do when I go. It weren't just necessarily about, about, you know, appreciating watching another team. It's when you wore that Katy Perry um, Basque thing that she had, that West Ham one that she had for Russell Brand. <laughs> when you uh, turned up at the station in that, tottering along in your little high heels, that was uh, unusual. Actually, I've got a photo of your boots here. This is, I'm um, um, just going to say... Um, just going back to Andy taking me up to South End on uh, on Saturday. <laughs> Premier yeah. seating. Yeah, we had that. We had the whole stadium to pick seats from, right? And this is my view of the. Uh... Oh. <laughs> Can you see that? Can you see that? That was my view. <laughs> and and these boots he had on. There's me boots. Little oh. high heels. Oh, <laughs> Oh, tempos. Yeah. They only have night nice. tempos, don't they? Yeah, they're ladies' well, ones. It's, um, it's, it's half time, so uh, you might as well make use of me for a little while now. Uh, on, you're watching that no more. To be fair, I've um, it's been very good at West Ham. I, I, I um, Danny Daw, um, Danny uh, Dyer came up and uh, wanted, head of doors. Wanted, wanted a photo with me, so I obliged. He said he'd seen the podcast and uh, wanted a photo, so I got a photo of um, Danny Dyer, which was quite nice. Yeah. Um, right, uh, Matt Smith, Andy Tallis is chatting SH1, whatever that is. When South End are below Wilston, right at the bottom, we're not right at the bottom. I'll just Wilson create it. Side. Wilson, massive. We're, I was in front quite... of South End in my egg and spoon race. <laughs> Simon, they played well, didn't they, on, on Saturday? They did. We went in the club shop before round as well, didn't we? Yeah, go on. it's like walking in Mince and Davis. Oh, nice! <laughs> <laughs> How'd they get on, Sado? They right, won two one. one. Oh, they, nice. beat, they beat uh, they beat Gallywood two one. Had Gallywood you're out of great. order. You're out of order. Dorf. We played Dulwich. We Dorf. played Dorking. Sorry, we played the massive Dorking and uh, Dorking Wanderers, that famous club, and uh, and we beat them two one. And our keeper saved the penalty. Not in the league. It was that a cup game, they're not in the league, are they, Dorky? Uh, yeah, it was a cup trophy. game. They stayed down with South End, Mr. Penalty, didn't they? It was the FA Cup or trophy. It would, have, it would have hit us, but it hit the post instead. <laughs> <Fill up>. <laughs> <laughs> it was lucky we had that seat, otherwise, I would have got the penalty in the mush. <laughs> <laughs> What's the uh, sorry, you know, anyone watching, just a uh, message as well. What's the worst seats you've ended up with, or like the worst conditions of watching a game? Saturday, Maybe South End. There you go. <laughs> I my... went to the. Uh, I went to the um, Olympics. No, it weren't the Olympics. It was the uh, uh, <laughs> Commonwealth Gen Generation not, Games. Paralympics. Yeah, not Memorial Games. But it was after a year celebration games. Mm -hmm. I think after a year of uh, things. So I thought I'd go over there and have a look at uh, like the stadium and stuff. And there was this woman with the biggest afro you've ever seen um, in front of me. <laughs> and I ain't the tallest, but it, it, it was just not even worth being there. I could see not one thing. You could see her I try, I, I try. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much it. Should have took a razor with you. 
<laughs> I think I think size size exaggerating, right? He was sitting there and it was like this. Right? It was <laughs> I was probably hanging on it like a little spider monkey. He only had to do this or this to see the other corner. Yeah. It wasn't that bad. I've got a thing and it's best for the guest. So like if I was taking someone somewhere and there was I had a chair, I had a view of a view and I had to sit someone else behind a lamppost, I'd sit behind the lamppost and let them have the nice view. Did that did you consider that? So no, he he'd, he'd upset me that day. He kept telling me how two seats in front were his season tickets and they were fantastic seats. It was almost like, look what you could have had. <laughs> <laughs> they were already sold. They were already sold. Bench. We got to Sorry, see Stephen Collymore. Yeah, Absolute really legend. England legend. It's funny because you came around mine after and said something totally different. <laughs> Collymore was there. Oh, apparently, Collymore. apparently Collymore was there. Couldn't see him. And he said to me, <laughs> we about 200 yards. Couldn't see he was the other side of the post. He did. He went... Yeah, look, there's Colin Moore underneath the director's box in the black in box in the black jacket and the hat. But the whole of that stand had a black jacket and a hat on, and he was all excited. Is it? He was even walking through the car park before and after the game to see if he could see his car. Is it Carol Becker? Carol Becker there? Am I lying, Andy? Am I lying? No. (laughs) (laughs) Was Carol Decker there, or is she gone now? No, it was Alison Moye. Alison Moye, Moye. same thing, isn't it? I'm not sure Alison goes anymore. She's very busy. (laughs) 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 Doing what? (laughs) What's she up to? Well, give us a day in the life of Alison. What's her name? Alison Moye. She probably has to go wait at like Arts and Spencers and get shopping, and then she probably has to go and like collect her royalties from all her songs and just. I don't know what else she does. Few viewers now, aren't we? Yeah, she used to push in front of me when I was like used to be a child. So you got, are, you, are you on record saying that Alison Moy beat you as a child? No, 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 no. Oh, yeah. She so beat cool. me in through the turnstile. Yeah. But I, uh, but I used to get so excited runner, when I used to see him. He's <laughs> really famous. Like yeah. he was massively famous then. Incredibly, yeah. viewers yeah. have gone up. Viewers have gone up. South End chat. South End chat. Viewers have gone up. No, this is what happens. When you start talking about popular things that are trending, like South End, that's what's going to happen, isn't it? Okay. Uh, Right. Let's get back back to the problem of football. So, also, Thursday nights. Thursday nights we do Football Fitness Club, and that's 8 till 9 o'clock. And then after that, we've got Mates FC training, which is coming up a kick about uh, 9 till 10 o'clock. Now, this year, we came back in June last year and we could do like groups of six. This year, we ended up up to 40 people um, each week on a Thursday coming over, having a kick around in the summer. It was brilliant because the gyms were shut, things like that. Mm, And it gave people an opportunity to uh, go and try something a bit different and get back out there. And it's really nice to see a lot of the regulars back. but no, if you fancy it, come over, uh, um, find it on, Rich, do you know what your uh, Instagram is or anything? Do you know your name? I don't know my name, but I don't know what the... Uh, Just look up, for, me on look the... up Football Fitness Club. And, yeah, look, uh, look up Football Fitness Club on Facebook. Um, there's a page on there that will shout you in the right direction. Or we have a website, Football Well, that's cool. <laughs> Yeah, good. Um, we'll post it onto the group. It's what it's, it's, what it's yeah, there it's for, good. yeah. We'll put a link underneath this if we can do such a thing. And, uh, yeah, so with the idea of that, do you want to just explain what Football Fitness Club is? Uh, yeah, Football Fitness Club is um, old school football training um, for anybody, really, of uh, any shape, size, ability. Um, if you played previously and don't play anymore, um, but you just want to... Get that football fix every week. It's for you. Pretty much for everybody. We have a uh, we have a series of drills, um, and uh, we'll finish off with yeah. five, six, seven, eight aside, depending on how many people are there. Um, we have a team of coaches that will put on a different session every week, so you're not going to be doing the same stuff every week. And Andrew, do you want to? 
Um, all I was going to say is Cy, Cy Green is a really bad ventriloquist. He's talking and trying to pretend that he's not talking, but no, then make like him louder because he's talking to Dan. <laughs> we put, we put, we put out the link. We put the link up. We put the link up in the comments. Well, well done, well done. Done well. Good work, uh, boys. No, yeah, I think uh, I, I think um, it's really it's a really good session for like exactly to Richie's point is guys that don't want to go to the gym or don't enjoy the gym or don't enjoy just going out running. It's a way of getting fit with, with a bunch of other lads that want the same sort of thing. Um, it doesn't matter what ability you are, what age you are. Um, you know, it, we, we sort of start it from 16 and above and, um, and yeah, we get a, a good sort of group, a good mix of people. And, uh, and yeah, we do three drills and then, then the match at the end and we try and balance it out with what people like. And we, we every now and then we'll do like a little bit of a survey just to see what you're liking, what you're not liking, and we'll refresh it and update it. Um, we generally do about an eight week program of different drills so that you won't do the same things week in, week out. Um, we'll, you know, we'll get to the eight weeks and then sort of do something similar again. But, but by then there, uh, it all feels a bit fresh and new. So we try, um, Rich is really good at, at in, uh, interjecting with new drills and stuff like that. So we try and freshen it up all the time. So you're not doing the same things week in, week out. Um, but yeah, it seems, you know, we get, we've, we've had from the surveys we've recently done, we've had loads of really positive feedback. So, um, so and those numbers, like through the summer with, you know, obviously when the weather's better, you're going to have more people. And also when as lockdown, was uh finishing and the gyms weren't completely open things like that we were getting we, we were somewhere you were somewhere for people to go when who normally go to the gym but it's a great alternative to go to the gym if you don't fancy the gym if you've got injuries or if there's any drills you don't fancy it's not a boot camp you step back out and you just don't get involved you know there's something you think that's going to bug you in there don't get involved just step out it's a friendly atmosphere it's not you know it's, it's not boot camp. It's fun. That's the idea. It's fun it's camp. Magic Mike. Magic Mike. Fun camp. <laughs> magic Mike. Magic Mike. Oh, oh, God. What's he going to be wearing when he comes oh, back? Oh, he's going to turn his lights out. We've got a message uh, just coming from Matt Dyer, one of our regular players. Evening, lads. Really enjoy playing for Mates FC this year. Thank you for all the hard work. So that's to you, boys, coaches. Hey, Matt. Well done, Matt. He's been playing excellent this season. He's done a great job. And uh, have you noticed? Sorry about uh, that. That's all right. Have you noticed much of an improvement or difference in uh, people over the season? Anyone spring to mind at all? Not trying to say me. Really? Um, yeah. Yeah, like abilities or confidence. Thing about mates, I think you, what, what you what you see from eighteen months ago to individuals now going doing the training and playing the games and having that confidence and that it's a massive difference. To yeah. be honest, I don't I don't know that there's anyone that hasn't improved i think every single person that plays for us has really really improved and i think from a from from a football inability but i think also from a from kind of just a social side of things and just being involved with the team and getting to know individuals i think that's the best thing about it i think everyone's really upbeat when they arrive and turn up and all that and it's it's becoming like a club now and it's it's enjoyable i love i, I really think it's good i think like Matt, Wave, matthew think Dyer there just is a perfect example he hasn't i wouldn't say he's improved uh talent wise because he's always had that talent but where he's been week in week out he's got to know people you can tell you can see the confidence and the, confidence. And the communications and the, and the communications out on the pitch yeah he's like yes yeah, speaks a bit more it's just more comfortable playing and he's he, well i haven't played for ages have I? but the last few games before i got injured he was up there mrm playing out of his skin i think same same for a few i people. think you can see it yeah, I think you can see also um, some of the regular teams that we play, um, like the improvement of them as well, like turning corners. Um, amazing how they've come on over the last year. Um, yeah. Yeah, I just think that they've sort of, they've kept at it um, after the first couple of times we played them, could have easily, like, could have easily given up. Um, you know what I mean? But it kept them going and their results have got better, the way that they organised a lot better, the, just done so well and it's um i think yeah i think there's a few teams like that that have um and on an interesting sort of got to know and played 
So I think now we've got the opportunity to sort of stop and look back a little bit is one of the things with the other teams, they're treated as a as another team, if that makes sense. But turning corners, you know, very much like us, they are people that are there to improve people's mental health, get people back out and on the pitch, and also people with maybe addiction problems or historic addiction problems, things like that. And how that bond with that lot has worked, and they've, you know, they've played us regularly, like once a month, pretty much. And sometimes they've played us twice a month. And as you say, seeing them coming on. But what I like this year, because we've had these other teams playing us, it isn't about, oh, there's a team who are about mental health. There's a team that's about this. Everyone's treated equally. And there isn't that, do you know what I mean? It's not, they're not, no one's judged about why they're in that team or what they're doing. It's just purely on what are they like on pitch and uh, are they a bit dirty? Um, but, you know, um, it's been brilliant. And, you know, another one, Villamar, FC Villamar, what lovely, lovely people. And, you know, we've built so many lovely uh, friendships, especially Turning Corners and FC Villamar, uh, formerly Sands Essex. Um, but that's been great and just been that community for us as well as managers. Yeah. And we've had a couple of other people and um, John, Jonathan Knight, Evening Gents, just want to say thank you for organising um, a football fitness club on a Thursday and mates games on a Saturday. I really enjoy them. Um, and Jonathan really is, is exactly what we were talking about from the days when he started at, at football fitness to how he is now, you know, he's really sort of capable player now and, and, you know, his fitness, I think, is improved dramatically and i think he, he'll sort of agree with that and and that's a sort of that's a sort of person exactly what we're talking about you know the improvement is is unbelievable you know and it's like, so nice to see him bring his kids you know yeah. bring his son over and that and yeah that little friendship as well we've had a team uh our last saturday game before we broke up for end of term um one of the lads wanted to play on our team rather than the other team so he could uh, kick his dad which is a brilliant reason to join our team if you want to kick your dad. Um, and then we've got Andrew uh, Keneally as well, and he's put, evening lads, um, loving the synchronised drinking from Cy and Danny, I presume. Um, thanks, <laughs> thanks for all the hard work from everyone involved. Looking forward to 2022, Mates FC. And again, another person who you know came over you. and has really sort of got his fitness up um, and he's really sort of solid player now in the in the team. So yeah, I, well, couldn't, that, I couldn't well. finger him on when he started playing for us, but he came over. To football <laughs> fitness. He came over to football fitness and um, <laughs> that's that's just going. Where that was going, where that was going <laughs> yeah, I wonder what this was about. Sorry, just walking <laughs> off the pitch, um, he just came and asked, like, "Oh, what about these games? What do you do?" and Within a matter of, you know, he's been consistent. He's been there nearly every, well, pretty much every week. Yeah. And, you know, Dan's the club captain, Dan Warner. He's our club captain. He is someone that nurtures the other te the team and uh, our captains. And that. But in Danny's absence, and Andy has been the, uh, the Saturday captain. He is our Saturday captain when Danny's not around. <laughs> That's come from just having a kick around at football fitness club. Brilliant. Yeah, he's good. Andy's a good, he's a good leader. Good leader. Yeah, definitely. Leads by example. It's good. And I think that that whole, I think from I think point, that that situation we had over at Molsham the other week, I think just shows what individuals are. You know, when we was over at Molsham, I don't know whether we can mention it on here. I don't know, but you know the situation where halfway through the game there was that situation. The way that everyone dealt with that, I thought was absolutely fantastic. Yeah, so over the year, we've had medical issues. Um, fingers crossed, we've only, you know, had, well, actually, we've had quite a lot of people dislocate shoulders and things like that. I stocked up on triangular bandages the other day. I've got loads. Um, <laughs> but, um, no, we, you know, we're there ready. We've got a defib as well, things like that. But we have medical issues that crop up, and we've got a really good, solid, team there to help out but also 
with like any sort of violence and things like that you know games do get heated um and that is not the situation that i will ever want or allow our players to be involved in and you know we've pulled probably two games mid-game because the other team we're not having that attitude you know rich you you've pulled one haven't you and we previously yeah. pulled, pulled one uh, um probably a few weeks before that because we don't know this year this year just gone we don't know who we're you know those teams we haven't played before we expect there to be that standard level of respect for each other and that we you're not going to have some but straight away you can tell if someone's you know you can see some people we have our eye on them from the beginning if they look like they're playing a bit dirty or whatever we'll have a word with their manager we'll have a word with their coaches but at the end of the day I have absolutely no issue with pulling a game midway because of I'm not putting my people trust us to come and play for us, and I'm not putting them in a situation where someone on the other team is no. being an arse, frankly. Anyway. Agreed. So, trust us. We're not going to put you in awkward situations. I was just saying, going to say... Um... The, uh, the the social side of things as well has just come on no end this year. I think there's been like groups that have gone to the pub together after the game and um, like socialised outside of the football. So um, it's not only about the football. Um, it is about meeting new people and coming over and getting involved in something, doing something no, a little different. People that can't play because they're injured or aren't down for that match or whatever, just coming over as well, just seeing yeah. the support. You know. Um, Chris has been a brilliant one of those when he's had his shin splints. Um, it's still come down and support. And every week for so Sunday, we'll just touch on the Sunday team as well. But Rich and I have got a, a million ideas of what we want to do um, with everything. And something in distance was like a Sunday league team at some point, but let's get ourselves sorted with the Saturdays to start with. However, before we even came back in April, there was an appetite there straight away of people getting their their passion and love for, and confidence back to play football. And we've got some brilliant players there. And to see that, we needed to make sure that we could sort of nurture them on and help them on. So we put it together. We had a team of people put it together to pull together a Sunday league team. Uh, Rich worked with them. And we got accepted into the Champions Sunday League. Started in uh, September. And as of this week, I think we're second. But that was because a team's pulled out and we've lost the points. Is that correct? Oh, is that right? Yeah, I think I we've lost. I hadn't seen this drop to second. Um, Matt Smith, can you give us some update? Yeah, as I understand it, uh, the team that pulled out of the um, league, which is really sad, you know, there's, there's, we've had some lovely teams we've played in that league. Um, they've had to pull out for some reason, and I believe we lose the points that we've um, built up through that. So, as I understand it, I think Dynamo Citra are first. Uh, I think they're two points ahead of us, but they've got two games that, more than us as well. You've got two games in hand over them then, Dave. If that's right... <laughs> I'm just shocked. But, they've also, uh, yeah, they've also done. They've also done well in the cups. They're still in the Gillick Trophy, um, which is sort of like at the bottom three or four leagues. So they're playing teams um, above yeah. their league standard um, and still in the League Cup. And they had a nice run in the County Cup, which is teams from all over Essex. Um, so I'd only narrowly lost in that competition, but. Um, Haven't haven't had a good run in it, so they've they've done really well so far. They've uh, they've been a credit to us. Absolutely, the organisation, the level of uh, you know we we put together a team. The idea was we'd use we've got a bank of managers that makes it. Um, We've got a bank of managers, and the idea was the Sunday team would use a manager or a rotor of managers from that. However, the people, the group that put it together for us, the uh, people that have been helping us out, our ambassadors, they've done such a good job. They're in, we let them run it now, and uh, they've done brilliantly between them. And it's lovely seeing them grow. Reese has just been phenomenal uh, as a manager. He's got a good, cool, level head, um, and yeah, 
very trustworthy. It's been brilliant. But it's lovely. Like, like, we're going to have to split these two up, I think. Like, it's like, it is right. like being back at school again and they're just sitting there like... Yeah, no, there's, there's that going on somewhere. I don't know if, if Dan's got his hand on his knee or what, but... Like, you, put, you put Maryland. You put Maryland. You're thinking, Maryland about cookies. thinking about Maryland cookies. Uh, I'm going to guess that's uh, Matt that's messaged that. Oh, I'll say I thought it was Andy. Maryland. Yeah, no, because Matt used that word earlier, that expunged word, and I didn't oh. know what it meant. <coughs> when he explained... Maryland Reserves, that's who it was. Yeah. <laughs> And again, they were great. To, they were great to play. It's a real, real shame. Lovely day over playing over that way, and uh, it's a shame to see him go. But you know, it is hard. It does take a lot of effort to run a club. And... With, with with the reserve sides, you it's always difficult. You you got too many people for a, a, a first team, so you think I oh, will get a few more players in, and let's get a reserve side, and then a few let you down and. Yeah, and bits like that, and then and life it gets starts the costing you money. It's yeah, yeah. It's, I think it's, I think you underestimate. Thing. I think you underestimate as well. Like even even the guys at Mates FC kind of underestimate how many guys you need for a Sunday league team because um, you know, like yeah. it, it is it is only a squad of eleven like that you need on the like for a match day, but you need over double that numbers. Because you get injuries, you get people exactly. working, you get people's life commitments, all of those things come into play. And if you've got just a few players over, a, a, you know, a, a two teams, basically, and you try and do reserves, you're constantly pulling them back into the first team. And that reserve team, it just can't, it can't continue. And it just doesn't get the chance to grow. We found, we... That, we found that with our team, isn't it? We've had a lot of, lot of players... You know, twenty odd players and people are like us too many, and then each week you're you're struggling. Sometimes, you know, it's yeah. it's how Sunday Sunday league works, kind of thing. And actually, you know, what what we've learned in September is exactly we've took yours and Rich's and everyone's advice in putting some extra reserves in for our Sunday team, and they're just nowhere near enough because no one expected the amount of injuries we've had, and this is just how it is. And even with COVID now, it's a logical thing we've learned that, well, obviously we're going to need a few extra pairs of hands, aren't we? Yeah. Um, for, a, you know, whether we do that for one season, a couple of seasons. And this goes back to Dan, Danny's point, you know, like the more fitness that you can do throughout the week. So like things like a football fitness club, all those kind of things keeps you playing football because, you know, you watch these guys on TV, um, you know, playing, playing in these matches and they're, they're training every day of the week, sometimes twice a week, you know, to maintain that level for, for an 11 a side game, you know, and they're training, 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 training. And they've got fitness coaches there. They've got nutritionists there. They've got uh, physios there, you know, then you're expecting to just turn up on a Sunday and maybe one training session a week and not get injured. Yeah. The other factor as well with that is on a Saturday, if you say, you, I think Dave, you said 20 people turning up. Obviously, you don't, don't get it every week, but if say 20 people do turn up every week on a Saturday, because the way it's set up, you can rotate that. So those players, the ones yes. that maybe, I don't know, not not might not be good enough, that's not the right term to use, but um, you can rotate on a Saturday, whereas on a Sunday, because you're in a competitive league, you're looking to get that. That team momentum, yeah, consistency yeah. and momentum. So you you tend to play the same players, and then some of those twenty will end up turning up three weeks in a row, and not getting on, or maybe just getting on for ten minutes, and get what, a bit fed up with it, and then they they don't show up show up the next week. So it's different to a Saturday to a Sunday. But yeah, the fitness yeah, the situation condition. with COVID, it's unfortunate. Uh, well, that's not just what I think of it, but it's it's unfortunate. But you know, when the regulations lifted, when we came back, we've got. FA guidance and rules that we have to apply to uh, that we have to enforce and facilities have got their own um, guidance that we have to enforce and when it came to July the 19th that was all just taken away by the you know full stop and even FA guidance is pretty much just be sensible rather than what we had to do like you know we had to do a COVID risk assessment all that sort of stuff and as you know, when it came to July, I was looking to pull all of our matches through August just because of the COVID rate locally, um, because we still need to deal with that problem. And fingers crossed, touch wood, 
Um, we have been very lucky because our players have followed that brilliantly when we've still kept things in place. Um, have been sensible with it. They want to be playing. And, uh, you, you know, we haven't... And it's only by luck and people help, you know, making sure we've still got some sort of COVID things in place. And we've got more up our sleeve if we need it. It hasn't interfered with the game. It hasn't, you know, done anything with... <laughs> Oh, look how scared Cy looks. But um, the, the FA guidance got updated again on Friday following um, the government's, um, uh, what do you call it, Plan B. And again, it just says, basically, just be sensible and take care out there, which you want a bit more than that, really, don't you? Especially at the moment. Matt uh, as it was, Sorry, as it, as it was in August... The rates of COVID were higher than when we was in lockdown, and we were allowed to play in that, and we weren't allowed to play in lockdown. So, the damage that you know, the uh, what people have had from their teams where they've had players missing, it, it, it's an un, unfortunate situation. Anyway, move on. Sorry, Go Matt. On, Matt. Uh, Matt Smith just put a message. Uh, love going all over Essex to see the Sunday boys um, when they're playing. Um, if they're seeing people cheering them on and supporting them, uh, I definitely think it helps. Um, he said there's been bigger crowds over there than Leighton Orient. Um, so it isn't hard. Um, you could even say that, you? Can I just say, I'm laughing because Dan Santasu in, I don't know if any everyone's camera, it looks like one of those orange boiler suits that they He's wear in America. Wearing prison. In prison. A proper kosher red one. In light. prison, it looks <laughs> like he's got a prison suit on, and then with that hair, he looks, looks like Jimmy Savile. <laughs> I was going to say more Jimmy Savile. What's around my bike? I was going to say Myra Hindley. <laughs> Let's not say any of those people. <laughs> Myra, Myra <laughs> Hindley and Jimmy Savile. So coming up over the next few weeks, <laughs> we're going to be doing a few um, odd podcasts. And we're going to get some people on from the Sunday team and we'll talk more about because we've got so many victories over this season already and we haven't had the opportunity to talk about them. So let's, we're going to have the Sunday managers on, a few of the Sunday players, get them on here and talk us through their season. We'll do the same with Saturday. Um, want to go into a bit more detail about football fitness because it's absolutely, um, you know, get yourself over there. Even I've kicked a ball there. Wow. There you go. Oh, yeah, it wasn't quite as skillful as the tennis ball, but... Was... Shut up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, can I just say something as well? Like, I'm not digging yeah. that out again, but his hair looks so much better. Give us a twirl. Like, yeah, I haven't done look. it. Where's the foreland? The foreland's gone. Oh, yeah, I cut it off about... Eight months ago. Two months ago. So that's Eight. probably what caused your injury. Yeah. Samson's hair's gone. Yeah. That's what it is. He's lost his strength. Cool Samson. I think he looks very nice like that. <laughs> Cheers, Anne. Without the hairband. It's good. It's a good look. I'm just going to say, just going to say, just going to say as well, when you uh, mentioned the uh, FA, FA guidance sort of hasn't given us any updates on um, any of, like, any further restrictions that we've got to actually do. Um, obviously, back when they was, I and mean, it was like... The groups of six and stuff like that yeah that was for us to like coach in that way and put on sessions it was like trying to reinvent the wheel um yeah if they yeah if they go back to it we've got things in place so we will continue as long as we can and um and that's for both mates fc and football fitness club and one of the things on that we've also got one of the options through august and through the you know stay quite stable until about the end of October, November, but we always had, we have always got stuff more up our sleeves that we can still put in and still keep playing. So as long as it, as long as we feel that it's safe and that is done with risk assessments, then it's not about yeah, sod it, let's go and play just for the sake of it. Your health is the main thing. That's why we're doing this. Um, but yeah, we've got plenty more up our sleeves that we can put in hand. And I think, Rich, you know, from what you've done, the years of playing football, managing, and things like that to steer us through this at the beginning of this that must be quite satisfying for you as well to use those skills differently 
and see what you can come uh, up with. Yeah, it was, it, was a, it was a massive group effort, though, to be fair, sort of, um, when you when you sort of work out, we had to have the coaches available, we had to have the different ideas to keep freshening it up on a weekly basis. Um, we had to have the coaches that were willing to like work with smaller groups rather than just like the whole team and stuff. So yeah, it was it was a group effort. Um, but yeah, with the logistics of things, it wasn't easy. But like I say, I think um, we came through it and we learned from it. Um, yeah. And we always have it in the locker now, so we can. And that's the thing we need to adapt. From that, do you feel? I feel that the confidence from that is. Whatever it throws at us next, unless there's a full lockdown that means we can't, you know, and then they don't let us play anymore. Whatever crops up, we're going to be able to steer around. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty confident of that. Mm -hmm. And I don't have any worries yeah. about it. Whatever crops up each no. week, we'll work it out. And we'll do it safely. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll, adapt. we'll adapt to what Boris tells us to do. Have a party, don't have a party. No. Um, My lad, sorry, say, Boris. So you look quite coy there. I'm just, I'm, yeah. listening, I'm listening. There's been a lot of coy mentioning. Yeah. Is it his parrot? Is that actually attached to you, Andrew? Or is that one of them floating balloon things? It's on his chair. Oh, he's in his seat. Oh. It's in his back cleavage. Have you seen that in his house? No, honestly, he's like Lovely. the front of his house. It's a whole, whole gremlin thing. Look at um, Gremlins, backs. What was he talking about? Uncanny. Huh? Look alike. Uncanny. Look, it's like. Imagine if Danny Warner had no hair and he was sitting beside. <laughs> <laughs> That angle's really good for you. You look like a, a soccer hard man or like a a, a burly gay pinup. <laughs> I keep I keep I keep looking at the camera. I'm going redder and redder, and it's because I've got a little fire in the corner, and obviously I can't get round to turn it off. It's like, it's like a sauna, yeah. like a sauna in here now. Wait, you in your pub? Are you in your pub? Yeah, I'm in the pub. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I've got that little fire on the corner and it's just absolutely <laughs> piping now. You look like you've had a busy day. Yeah, I have. And only one more left, though. All right, rub it in. When does everyone finish for the old Christmas? When do you finish, Dave? Uh, Christmas Eve. Then I'm on call out all Christmas. Really? Wow. wow. There's a lot of potholes as well. I don't yeah. start till Christmas Eve. <laughs> I think we um, should. Uh, I, think we should I think we should. Uh, at, as this is the first like pod in a while, I think we should chuck a couple of thank yous out there, um, just in case anyone's watching that um, we have a thank you too. So I'll um, I'll start and say uh, thank you, Bado Spartak, um, for we for your help in getting the Sunday side together. That's where our home team are playing their home games, um, and Gallywood FC for. Loaning us a pitch at the last minute the other week when we had a charity game. And, and that's the community uh, current... has been brilliant. The support we've had from other teams. Yes, yeah, that's just... Yeah, so, so I just uh, thought for a couple of thank yous out there. I don't know if there's anyone else I've missed. Um, if any of you boys can think of anybody that... Um, do you know what, Rich, when, 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 I, when I went and see the Gallywood guy Saturday morning about it and mentioned what we do mm -hmm. and how things were, he knew who we were and what we've done and all that kind of stuff. And he, he actually, he stopped, game. he stopped a game that was potentially going to go ahead to, to accommodate our game. Cause oh, yeah, no, yeah. it was good. It was good. Yeah. So the name's getting about and it is getting about and, and, and obviously we're doing the right thing with the right individuals and all that sort of stuff. So it is good. It is good. Really, really good. Yeah, I don't know about the others. So if anyone's watching, Gary with Bados Park, thank you for your help. Yeah. And FC Villamar, like, Dealing with them, it's just been an absolute joy as we've steered through things this year. Um, obviously, can't not mention turning corners, right? Chris Dunn. Yeah, they've been amazing. Go on, Dan. Uh, no, I've just been like, like uh, from Home Alone. 
<laughs> the wet band, sticky bandage. <laughs> they were wet in the second one, I think. Probably is. My screen's wet. I have my Guinness. It went everywhere. They do uh, look like the wet band. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's obvious. Well, <laughs> Hang on, I've got on me. You're the one who gets electrocuted, Dan. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So, there's going to be a pot of paint swing through those doors behind you on a screen. Yeah, so I just need. So I just so like need to go and to, and he's pretty much there. Uh, I was oh, just, mate. I was just going to say about. Um, I don't know about any of you guys, but often when I'm having conversations with people, that. Uh, I can think of a couple actually that I don't know, but people are just chatting away <laughs> and they mention mates FC and, and mates as well. Um, just people, I've had conversations with people I know, and then I've had a couple of people come up to me and say, Oh, you do that mates thing, don't you? So it is the name is getting about. And Lee Pryle, Wheat Chief. Yeah, there well, we go. There's another one. Yeah. He's someone that's come to us for help initially been massively open with things and he's helped us massively with mates about speaking out about things um i suppose uh last november uh me and lee opened up his pub as the uh mates pub hub in chelmsford so a place where you can go and pick up mental health um leaflets things like that go and talk to people there um, we've got our name on their uniform as well, well mates um, pub pub. They're the home of mates FC, and uh, you know we've had a couple of uh, socials in there. But he also organised mates fest for us, which that was something I didn't think we'd ever have. We've had um, three different bands, well, three of our players happened to be in different bands, and we had all of them play on the same day. They all donated their time, all played, and the team got to see what each you know what they do out of football and it was just absolutely brilliant and lee done it all for us um absolutely brilliant and yeah he he wants to have a kick around and come and play at some point uh but running a pub from doing it in the past it's just horrific it takes so much time <laughs> um but yeah lee just brilliant He's... have you mentioned which probably was top bloke the week sheet Dave, you mentioned yeah, the Busy pub as well, isn't it? Busy pub. Pub. I, I went in there um, a couple of I went there a couple of Fridays ago before the day before the actual uh, mates mates FC social and there's there's a big mates FC flag on the wall. All the bar staff have got mate shirts on. You know, it's sort of um, he's gone over and above um, uh, promoting us. So uh, yeah, yeah, another, another big thank you. Yeah, because we uh, took a load of stuff down there for mates fest. And he just asked if he could keep a couple of things and put them up and put a couple of the banners up and all that sort of stuff. So that's brilliant. So we're working on um, like a little booklet to put in there as well. So anyone can pick it up and find out step by step what we do and how to get involved. Um, Kieran, one of our uh, managers, he's just working on the website for us. We'll have that up and running. It's coming around tomorrow. Um, We'll have that up and running and it'd be really clear go through mates but then you go through the mates website which is mates.org um and uh yeah there'll be a big bit in there about mates fc and that'll link through to football fitness club and everything we do so we'll get a load of stories on there get a load of pictures up on there all our fixtures will be on there and it'll make it a lot more accessible for everyone where are the wet bandits gone We've probably just had an anvil dropped on them. Do you know what's really funny? That's not even either of their houses. They're doing... yeah, exactly. We've uh, <laughs> one. The owners have just come out. So... In a minute, on. they're going to have to leg gonna, it out the back. I'm just going to quickly log off before they come in. Yeah. Have you got a bag of swag? <laughs> a bit of swag. I want to thank Kevin McAllister. Is that who Macaulay Culkin was? Or yeah. is that the man from um, that Kevin home? Kevin McAllister. Yeah. Kevin McAllister. <clears throat> Who's the man that, like, you know, that ho building a new home program? And he's like, oh, Jeff and Jilly have got £5 million pounds spare to build a second home in the woods. That man. What's that? What's he? Kevin McLeod. Dion Dublin. Kevin McLeod. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Dion Dublin, do you know about his doob? Is that what it's called? He's invented a musical instrument. A square oh. thing, the doob, yeah. <laughs> what? It's like what a drum, isn't it? Like he invented his own drum. Huh. 
Yeah. No, really. He's got his own website. He's invented his own drum. And uh, he, needs to get, he needs to get somebody to beat it because we hadn't heard about it. <laughs> he needs to get somebody to beat the drum. That's good. Get it, get it out like that. Oh uh, dear. So I had to leave, so he said his goodbyes. Oh, he must have so had to leave. Jim, Jim, Jim has called him. Jim, Jim is at your back gate, gonna kill him. Gonna kill him. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, uh, yeah, talking about um, the wet bandits and that, um, my friend's done his house up this year as Home Alone, and he's raising money for uh, Baddow's Hall School. And, uh, and it's there's another chap, there's a is it finally hospice as well? Or yeah, I think, think yeah. Out? Yeah, I think it is. You just call, uh, you called Gemma out. And yeah, look, Gemma, I haven't called him. Oh. Yeah, his house, his house. Who was that woman money. at the end of Danny's garden then? <laughs> just probably enough one of Danny's ones. Gemma, can you get the bins out for me, please? <laughs> I think it might be Rich, it might be the lady who owns the house. <laughs> 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 she's come home she's on the phone now going there's two strange men in my house and one's dressed as santa there's only one now. Well, i can't not tell this story i think i've already told it but um one of my friends is a plumber and he went around a house to go and do some work there it's a housing association one and they had a contract with him so he went around there not to he's got that confidence that plumbers have that i don't have and um yeah, knocked on the door, no answer. Side gate was open, walked around there. Back door was open, went in, calling around, and he needed to go to the toilet. So he went to the toilet, um, like a uh, number two, and then he come out of the <laughs> toilet, walked around the house a bit more, still couldn't find the person. So he phoned his boss, and he's like, well, look, should I just get, should I just crack on with it? But I can't find the manhole cover in the garden, because there's all decking. And they went, Man no, there's no decking there. Um, and he'd got the wrong house and just gone in and done a shit in someone's house. Oh my god! Like, I don't know where the owner was, but he'd just gone in and just done a shit in someone's house. But who does that? Danny. Anyway, Danny. Uh, who, who invented the word manhole? Work, come here. That's um, yeah. at work. That's my carry-on film carrying up the manhole. And, but yeah, uh, uh, Fletcher's, <laughs> Fletcher's done the old uh, house up all home alone. He's got even a Kelly, Kevin McAllister that comes down from the tree. Kevin McLeod. Kevin McLeod. And he goes, who would live in a house like this? Oh, that's, no, that's not even him, is it? Lloyd Grossman. Lloyd Grossman. No, it's brilliant. It's is that his son there. that he makes jump over the fence? Eh? Yeah, yeah. And then he's got his son dressed in the same thing. So it comes down behind the yeah. wall and then a smoke machine comes on and then his son jumps over the wall so it looks like he's just come yeah. down. Yeah. Is his son oh, doing that like every couple of minutes every, all, day? all day? Yeah, that's it. He's yeah, doing that <laughs> he's, um, he, he, he was on BBC News the other day. He's on the website. You can check it out on BBC website. And uh, I think everyone's just gone mad for it this year with lights, haven't they? Like if you, uh, do you know where the Bado fire station is yeah if you go into i don't know what it's called the end of Megate avenue up there is it long so i don't know but you go in just past the fire station take your first left tyrrells um it's incredible every house they've just gone for it it's one of those that would be on like local news there's but, a couple there's a couple there's one in braintree nalian road in braintree has gone mental as well um, but it's so good to take the kids there's, to, one, in, there's one in hatfield peril Put, in Hatfield Pebble, they've got a thing where you pay two pound towards charity, and you get a map, and it tells you where to go around. Oh, brilliant! Mark Allison's put Tyrrells. Ah, oh, lovely. Is it just um, oh, God, I've forgotten his name. Santa. No. Rudolph. Well, 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 well. Wishart. Does Wishart live up there? Yeah. Uh, yeah, he does. Yeah. That's a thinky dog. Does he want to go and see Wicked Art? You want to go and see Quiet the Hunk um, and some Christmas lights? That's where you go. Or if you want to take your children to go and see some lights and you don't have to pay anything or see other people, just drive down there at night and uh, it's great. Right. Um, from the Wet Bandits, do you want to say goodbye? Bye. Happy Christmas. It's good to be back. Thanks. We may be back next Tuesday. I've just got to work on because I have to launch this from a laptop and I might not be here in this country. 
Um, so we'll see if someone else can launch it from their computer. Then we'll do it next Tuesday. Uh, we'll definitely be doing it the week after that, and we might throw a few more in over Christmas if we're drunk and got nothing else to do. Well, happy Christmas, everybody, and a happy new year. And thanks for this year. It's been amazing. Well, football side of it has. Yeah. Life hasn't. Oh, next, don't end like that. Oh, God. Don't end like that COVID and all that. Next, no, year's, another, next year's another. Yeah, what, what a dump now. Oh, well, Merry okay. Christmas anyway. I was actually looking forward to it. <laughs> Danny, next year, Rick and I will make next year for you. This, all three of us will make next year for you a very special year. We don't know how, but we'll Let's make get rid of COVID. COVID. Let everyone get back to normal. Well, it's a bit. I was just going to get you a cake or something, but you know. Uh, I'll do. Just stroke your face, stroke your beautiful face. And just just to let you know, before we uh, log off, uh, Arsenal are winning four one, and they look like they're back in control. To be fair, so we're looking forward to Tottenham West Ham tomorrow, boys. Yep, West Ham massive, massive. Oh, did you like their? Did I you know they go? Is that? <laughs> that was the second thing I knew about football tonight. But what? What the West Ham are massive. Yeah, no, that the price one. <sighs> right, yes. West Ham are massive. South End have got back to winning ways, so South End pillars are massive. Oh, all right. <laughs> I, was, uh, I was thinking, um, I don't know what for, but maybe we could work it into the Mates FC type thing. I was thinking about auctioning my body off um, to be tattooed. So I'll give planning permission on certain parts of my body, and then people can bid for that area, right? <laughs> They can bid for that area. We're still alive. And then they can have it. They can, if they donate the money, whoever donates the most, or who puts the most money in for it, for that area, gets that area, and I will have anything they want tattooed on it. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. Why does it matter? <laughs> what, a permanent I'm tattoo? Yeah. I am literally going to save yeah, up. Both I'm saving arms. up now. I'm going to ask for Christmas arms. money for Christmas. My back, my rack, um, my thighs. I've got. Um, oh, I'll get them out. Um, yeah, my thighs. I've got tattoos on at the moment. My feet, but my legs are completely empty. The bo- uh, the middle of my back, and there's a lot of back there. Um, Your face. I've got quite a lot. Can't do my face. The working thought. Um, I've got a big old forehead. We could do something out there. Oh my god! I'm asking for money for Christmas. Just I'm, gonna get, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say forehead, spam backwards, and then when you do a selfie, you ain't gotta flip it round. Just, just spell it spam. right. What is spam backwards? Is it map or not? Maps. Is it actually? Yeah. That's brilliant. <laughs> Everyone's brains. <laughs> <That's laughs> brilliant. <laughs> Maps. Maps. So uh yeah, anyway, thank you very much. And uh yeah. It's just been brilliant this year. Thank you so much for everything you've done for us. Um, and uh, get thinking about what you want to tattoo on me. Um, I might consider piercings. Um, Pierce? I reckon I could get a, a 40 <laughs> hula hoop that children have when they're hula hoop in a garden. That's what I'm going to pay for, to get a, a, a tattoo of Pierce on Pierce, Dave. Pierce's goal. <laughs> tattoo of Pierce on David, Dave's armpit or something yeah, like that. That'd be good. <laughs> Yeah, right yeah. there. We right. have it there. Um, Lindo. That number there, that's the date I met Michael Jackson. So we can put Piers there, but it's bad there. Michael Jackson. <laughs> we can have Piers in there. Put the date that he scored that goal. Yeah, we could have that over this side. When you met Michael Jackson? Yep. Well, when you like, he said, hi, Michael, and he went, oh, hi, Dave. You met him? Uh, yeah, I paid a lot of money, and I met him. And I, that it was, we got really drunk, not me and him. I just bought a Duffer St. George hoodie and I was at the Hammersmith. <laughs> um, no, I went to London to Covent Garden to the Duffer St. George shop. To get this my is like a Danny LaRue there. story. Me and, me and Ronnie Corbett. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, no, and the, yeah, we went and saw this Michael Jackson uh, <laughs> he was like a fan club thing and he'd come over to appear at it. And, just happened to be in the country and um yeah and then we met him afterwards and they said right basically you're going to go through this door mr jackson uh you're going to walk towards mr jackson 
Um, Mr. Jackson will say hello. Do not communicate more than that with Mr. Jackson. You have your photo taken and you move on. And I'm, you know how I'm proper brown nosy for the rules. I was just like, oh, no. It was like going to a headmaster. And I walked in and he had, um, he'd had a spider bite on his foot. And he's, uh, that was the re apparently. And he had like a cast on his foot and he was on crutches. But you always think of Michael Jackson as really small because he was a child when he became famous. But he's still about 5'11". Massive hands, really, really massive hands. And then he looked like, you know when someone's got a nan who's got an old Labrador and it doesn't even really move? He just looked like his, skin, his face was translucent. And it was just like a really sad Labrador. And I love him so much. <laughs> and and I, walked up, I walked up. He put his hand out and massive hand, like um, you know, in gladiators where they put the uh, the big, the big gloves. He had that. massive hands like that. Like Jeremy Beadle. Yeah, he had massive hands and um, put it out, gripped me with his one hand because the other hand had a crutch under it. Like, Thank you for coming. And uh, he loved me. Did he love you? And, uh, he loved me, and then uh, he wa I walked out the back, and I sat like because they took you out the back of the Hammersmith Apollo. Went out there like the stage door and I just sat down and I was just, I, I was, you know, when a baby sobs, I was like that. I couldn't breathe. I wanted to throw up. Um, I just don't know what happened. I became really like, yeah, I, mean, I, I remember the smell and then I found out what it was. It's Tom Ford. Um, I've got a black orchid. Uh, so I spray it and where, when I work at home, I spray it. So I smell of Michael, it smells like old flowers and old ladies. And then shortly afterwards, I was at the after show party with Shola Armour and Damage. And um, <laughs> I was sitting with the IP bit with Damage. And um, they, one of them went off to the bar, and there's a few of them. And because it was a Michael Jackson um, uh, like a charity type, what do you call it, fan club thing, there was a lot of like underprivileged children there. Mm -hmm. and, uh, someone. One of the carers for one of the children put one of the children in the seat that one of the people from Damage was in. And he came back and he said, who's that child in my seat? Um, that's where I was sitting. And I was like, I don't know. And he was Michael like, this. no, this, the man from Damage. Oh, all right. No, that, no. He's like, did one of my bandmates have that child put there? I was like, no. Like, <laughs> and then, then he walked off and I was like, this is really weird, like really awkward. Did you get but, a photo yeah. of Michael Jackson? Yeah. Yeah, and then... Um, well, you and him? Huh? You and him together? Did you get a certificate? Oh, that long he goes, that's one of them certificates. He says, I met Michael. Have you seen <laughs> really, really you got a photo of you and him? Yeah. Where? Have you never seen my Michael Jackson room? No. <laughs> it's on Facebook. When I was a child, like my ceiling had posters on i collected pepsi cans and i used to cut the back out of a pepsi can right, like a door and i'd open it up and then on a door in my bedroom i'd staple the back of the pepsi can like that and i built a wall up because he was sponsored by pepsi and they had pictures from on it and i built ah oh, i was obsessed hey, but, uh, the picture of you and him is it on facebook no oh no no it's not no i look awful i look better than i did when i met gary barlow um, oh, Jesus Christ! Gary Dave, Barlow, like, Dave, Gary Barlow like, looked like a little uh, little rabbit compared to me. Dave, do you like yeah. Michael Jackson more than Andy likes Stan Collymore? No, that's not possible. No, I like Michael Jackson <laughs> more than I like most of my friends, and I don't have any <laughs> issue with that whatsoever. Stan Collymore is the best player. <laughs> Dave, I'm going to post that on the group. You're going to hate this, but I'll send it on the group. <laughs> Not right now. Let me finish. Right. Anyway. On that note, Shamo! <laughs> don't be note, uh, well, don't be good this Christmas. Be bad. <laughs> <laughs> All I'd like to say is thank you for coming. I love you. <laughs> 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 Goodbye, everyone.